the college football experience Marshall Thundering Herd 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Networks brought to you by Circa Sports. Yes, yeah, Circa Sports is back with their Circa Survivor and Circa Millions contest. For $15 million are up for grabs. Get all the details at circusports.com. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. This is Jim Mora, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes! Woo-hoo! Welcome! Welcome to the college football experience. Marshall Thunder Heard 2023 season preview. I'm excited to talk about the Thundering Herd always. I mean, I, 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 just, I enjoy this program. I enjoy it for what it is. Uh, as an ECU guy, I like when ECU and Marshall play. I think it, you know, it, it should happen more often now. You know, now that they're both in the FBS, it should happen more often. Marshall's been in the FCS for the past 20 years, and they have some classic games. Um, shit, more than 20 years. Uh, anyway, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, well, my name is Colby Swiggin Database Dan, aka Pick. Don D, that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. Uh, Would have killed a normal man, but uh, now that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was... It was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. And you're nothing but a chameleon, hey. lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Sure. Good night. Yes. Love the new Sun Belt. They know what college football is about. I can tell when I look at what they did. I'm glad they're out of the CUSA. CUSA, Shmi USA, all right? It is. Look, it's cool that they're going weekdays, but they're all scattered. I like the Sun Belt, baby. I like what they got going on. I'm joined by my co host. Give it up for former, former JMU Duke defensive back. They're in the Sun Belt. Hello. The burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheel to dealing. Patty C, the place to be. Hi, oh, well, we can talk about it. We can go. Doug Chapman days. We can go. Chad Pennington. Randy Moss. Troy Brown. Byron Ooh. Leftwich. Oh, remember him against ECU in the bowl game? It was a classic. <laughs> uh, Eric Cresser. We can go on and on and on. Oh, Henry yeah. Columbi. Grant uh, Wells. There you go. Quarterback, you here? I guess you mentioned Randy Moss. Elite player, you. Elite player, you. Uh, Carl Lee. All right, Carl Lee, the old uh, Vikings defensive back. He's a tech mobile. <laughs> he's a tech mobile. He's a tech mobile. He's on, Let's go. Legend. Let's go. We are also joined by Sunbelt specialist, DFS God. Some know him as as well. Remember, come play college football DFS when the season starts uh, with us. So uh, look, give it up for the rooftop by PA drinking. Homebrew making tobacco road, living the free lack, giving farmer, farmer, Herndon basketball league MVP, give it up, Red Sea Nick in the place to be. There we go. What's going on, guys? I mean, what is going on is is I love Woo! talking a little, a little Woo! Sunbelt football <laughs> and also the Marshall Thundering here. Can we, can we just stop for a second and appreciate? So, as I mean, as someone that uh, college football is being torn apart by the uh, these TV execs, they don't know. They just don't know. But you know who does know? The Sun Belt and perhaps the president of Marshall, because Marshall joining the Sun Belt. What's your take on that, Patty C? Oh, fantastic move. Uh, Marshall App State every year sounds amazing. Marshall yeah. JMU sounds amazing. Now, yeah. obviously, I, w- I do want Marshall ECU every year, but also Marshall. 
in coastal sounds fun. Uh, I even like Marshall and Southern Miss. I feel like that is a cool cross division, even though that's not going to happen every year. Yeah. Marshall, Georgia Southern sounds fun. I mean, what West Virginia as a state and Marshall in particular, is this, I mean, I know they were in the Mac for a while, you know, in two different stints, but then they were in the Southern conference before. Are they a, a, a Northern team or a Southern team? They're fringe, right? They're, they're, they're fringe. It gets cold up there. I remember watching Marshall games as a kid in the snow. So that makes it a little tricky to say they're a Southern culture. Team. Culture though, is more like a Southern team. I feel like uh, Ohio, which is the Mac and the South are the same culture. <laughs> you know, they may have been on the different side of the civil war, but uh, they're, they're all football centric. Well, this, uh, this is a proud program. They won a national championship in 1919 with an eight and oh season. Uh, they have won FCS national championships as well. That happened later, later in the, what the, uh, the night they lost the national championship in 87, the national championship. Uh, they lost the national championship in 91, but then they won the national championship in 92. Uh, then they lost the national championship in 93. Uh, then they lost the national championship in 95. Then they won the national championship in 96. This is a rich, rich program when it comes to dominance on the football well, field. They haven't had, they, they, they hardly ever have a losing season. So when they jumped up to the FBS, when was that? That was uh, 97 that they jumped up, right? Uh, yeah. Check this out. They have had, well, they from 05 to 08, they had a, t- a tough stretch under Mark, Sh- Mark Schneider where they had four straight losing seasons. If you jump out of that, so four, six, they've only had what, seven losing seasons in their FBS existence since, since uh, 96. Pretty unreal. Did we talk about their national championships at the FBS level yet? Yes. No, we talked about them at the FCS level. Well, in 2014, they got one. Yeah, they got oh, one. Yeah. One loss, a one point loss to an eight and five uh, uh, Western Kentucky Hilltopper team, 66 67 in was overtime. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ohio State, who wins the quote, quote national championship, lost to a six and six Virginia Tech team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Same record. And look, Marshall never given a chance. Honestly, we are a publication here at SGPN and Marshall, if you want to reach out to us, I will fill out whatever paperwork so you can hang this because there's so many <laughs> fickle and for uh national championships out there. Um, this is just as to me, did they ever play Ohio state Patty C? Then how the hell do we know <laughs> if they, if they lose to Virginia tech at six and six, and I bet you who did Virginia tech lose to that year? I uh, bet you they lost to some very questionable teams. Yeah, then how did. the hell? Well, that was the yeah. uh, Virginia Tech three to three or uh, zero to zero Wake Forest game, <laughs> the uh, greatest game in college football yeah, history. That's right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> but look, thirteen and zero in nineteen ninety nine, right yep. in the MAC. Yep. And and Florida State was what thirteen and zero in the same year. Yeah, it's very true. Man, very I'll, true. Let them play. Give them, hang the banner. <laughs> it's true. Play right Be, now. You, Bring those yeah. guys back out. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's Wink. Oh, no, no, no. Chris Wink. Chris Wink. He's, he's getting his AARP, social security. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, so, all right. Well, look. Before we, before we, well, let's talk a little bit about one Charles Huff, because he'll huff and he'll puff and he'll blow your fucking house down, Patty C. Because this guy walk on at Hampton University back in the day. Uh, then he he's got the coach. So this guy played fullback, tight end, guard, and center at Hampton. That's called getting it done right there. All right. <laughs> and, and as far as I'm concerned, I know we haven't gotten to our episode for our head coaches and, and Royal rumbles. He's got to be up there. He's got to be top. He's got, he might be a one seed in a, in our Royal rumble. Charles for, Huff. Yeah. Charles yeah, Huff. A young stud. It looks like so, you know, you don't, you maybe don't, maybe you don't, maybe you don't tell him he's a piece of shit. All right. Well, uh, in all the, seriousness, I think, I think we need to do what other pods don't do. And we need to say that we were wrong because I think we were all very skeptical after doc holiday got let go. We, you know, that was, we were, we had our problems with that in, in the first place. And then to, to hire what the running backs coach, I, I don't think we, any of us thought it was going to work. And so far he is proving us wrong because he has what two really good seasons and he has the program pointed in the right direction. And you have to tip your cap and say, he's doing a hell of a job. He is doing a hell of a job. And I thought I was wrong when Bud Foster came on the show 
legendary Virginia Tech defensive coordinator said, "Yeah, I went up to uh, Huntington because Charles Huff, I think, is a great coach, great guy, and I think he's cutting edge, and, and the world's going to find out about that soon." So. Don't doubt old buddy boy. Bud Foster knows a thing or two about football. So I, when, when Bud Foster's telling us that, so look, the only problem though, to. is how long will he be around in Huntington? If things, if things continue to go well, <laughs> maybe and, not, not after long. this year. <laughs> well, and that and that's what you wonder, right? Right. Patty C like we've talked about this, you know, there was speculation that he could get hired last year. I think he might have yeah. interviewed too. Um, now, Colby pointed out a certain Big Ten program that's going to be looking for a head coach soon. Well, that's one that jumps to mind. You could also is he going to take that one? Is the question? What, I mean, what, what, what? There's a few out there. I think you could make a case for. What about Missouri with his look? This guy coached at Miss, Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, and Alabama. So Missouri might have been. It's a big year for Eli Drinkowitz. You know, it's a big year. You could say a lot. You could say, what about the Memphis Tigers or Georgia State? Would he be could they offer more money? Who knows? I don't want to just throw this out there. We're talking about Marshall too Podcast. Soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't want to piss off the Marshall guys. They're like, hey, can we just enjoy this season first? But I mean, look, when you're a Marshall and you have a, a young coach that does really well, you have to think that he that you know the same thing happened at App State with Scott Satterfield or Eli Drinkwitz. You know, so the Sun Belt, when they have a young hot coach. Jamie Chadwell, same thing at uh, at Coastal. So yeah, it might happen, but I hear you. Let's enjoy the run while he's here, right? Well, and let's let's Charles enjoy Huff's salary. By the way, seven hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. That's is that he it? could be a coordinator. Wow. At, yeah, he could be a sub uh, position. He, pr- he might have made more as the running back. <laughs> but coach in West Virginia, that's like making three hundred million a year. <laughs> right? Cost of living uh, in Huntington is uh, pretty low. Uh, look, he's we're probably the talk- fifth richest dude in the state. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk all about it, especially now that Bob Huggins is suing the. Uh, he spent a legal legal fees for Huggins. That's right. Well, Huggins doesn't up. know what state he's in. So. Yeah, that's true. That's what state of mind, also right. what physical state. Uh, so he's got a few different ones there. Look, we're going to talk all about. And and by the way, Marshall, West Virginia need to be playing more often. What yes. the fuck? All right. Pathetic. Come on. Come Th- on. That game's awesome. If we can have that happen, more college football wins. Folks, uh, we're going to talk about the Marshall thundering herd offense, defense, special teams, how they did in the transfer portal. We're going to go game by game on the schedule. But before we do that, I want to tell you that the Marshall Thundering Herd 2023 season previews brought to you by Circus Sports, Circa Millions plus Circus Survivor are back at it. Fourteen million dollars in guaranteed prizes are up for grabs. Uh, look, Circa Millions of five NFL picks ATS each and every week. Circa Survivor, just pick a different money line winner each and every week. Enter in Vegas, play from anywhere. Look, and the SGPN crew, Sports Gallery Podcast crew, will be out there the last weekend in August. CircusSports.com for all those details. Once again, CircusSports.com. Uh, look. What would you do with $14 million? All right. Maybe you'd come hang out last weekend in August with the SGPN crew. All right. Let it ride. But uh, check out circusports.com for all those details. All right. We are back on the college football experience. Marshall Thunder and Herd 2023 season preview. Now, look, I know Marshall's had some big wins in its tenure in the FBS. I remember them going to Kansas State and Bill Snyder uh, with, I think it was the Pennington era. If not, and, and, or no, maybe if it wasn't, no, who was, they had a really good quarterback after Pennington and left, which that didn't make it in the NFL. I think that's when they went to Manhattan, Kansas and won. Mm-hmm. Um, drawing a blank on who it is right now, but is it Stan Hill? Uh, no, Bernard no. Morris. What was it? What'd you say? Bernard Morris. Uh, he was Graham Garchenauer. No, no, <laughs> I'm no. looking for it. Anyway, um, <laughs> They they they've had some big wins in, in program history before. I remember they beat the tar out of Purdue one time too. Um, but last season, that's another thing. Routine Charles Huff. Cato. You want to know why Charles Huff's going to get hired away? Because he went to Notre Dame and won twenty six twenty one on their turf under the lights of the golden golden dome. There, oh. huge. Can't talk. Just, that's got to be the biggest win in program history, right? Just don't mention the week after that. That's true. They did get upset. And, and look, I will mention it because I called for Bowling Green on the money line that game. I said, what a letdown spot and Bowling Green got it done in overtime. But I'll also mention the fact they went to bridge fourth connect stadium and dominated oh. the JMU Dukes. 
Let's uh, let's point out that we did not have our starting quarterback. They took full advantage of uh, us missing uh, Sunbelt Player of the Year, I believe, mm. Todd Santeo. Mm. It's a nice time to catch us. Uh, they also shut out the Old Dominion Monarchs. Uh, they beat Appalachian State. I know NC Nick's not happy to hear about that one. And uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, they took down Georgia Southern and Georgia State and UConn. In the Myrtle Beach Bowl, so yeah, if, you're, if you're doing the math, that's uh, four the last four regular season games they won, and they won the bowl game. So uh, a ton of momentum entering year three for Charles Huff. Yeah, and so let's talk about this portal because this portal. Uh, Sorry, offensive player of the year, Todd Santeo. Somehow, Grayson McCall was player of the year. Yeah. And plays on offense, but yeah. not offense player there. <laughs> <Okay>. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it on. is interesting. Uh, look in the portal, they lost. Safety Dink Jackson, great name. Uh, he's in the portal. <laughs> Safety uh, Danesis Miller is in the portal. Uh, they also lost. Um, this one's tough. EJ Jackson to Appalachian State. Cornerback EJ Jackson to Appalachian State. Oh. What? <laughs> Where the hell? Where the hell is my Get that sound drop going? What is and going play it on? about four or five times. How does that happen? Uh, to the you, rival? You'll get to it, but there was a trade because yeah. an App State linebacker also went to Marshall. But yeah, we will get to it. Safety uh, Andre Sam also headed out to the Tulane Green Wave and Willie Fritz. Uh, also wide receiver, Corey Gamage. This guy's good. He went yeah, to UC. He, yeah. He, he went to UCF. He was a baller. Brutal. Goes out to UCF wide receiver. Uh, Shad, Shad, Shadid, Shaded, uh, Ahmed, Shadid Ahmed. He is now at Texas state. That's in conference too. You bozos. Right. Uh, then you got safety Hagen Stevenson. Uh, he's in the portal. Um, then you get off at the tackle, Jack Murphy. All right. He goes to Appalachian state too. <laughs> then you got linebacker, Dan Foster to Texas state. I mean, what is going on here? Uh, then, then you get uh, linebacker, uh, James Samir to UAB and Trent Dilfer. Also defense alignment, Emmanuel Bush in the portal, uh, quarterback, Peter Zamora. He is uh, going the Juco route, uh, defensive lineman, Emmanuel B Belugan. Uh, he joins Biff Pogey. Uh, I mean, that those are some big losses. I believe that that's that caps off everyone. They lost. They gained though. They were, they were active in the portal. You gotta be these days. Dude, you're... What, what, I'm sorry to cut you off. One big loss too is the other, uh, you know, the third or fourth receiver last year, EJ Horton, who went to West Virginia. Talk about shots fired. Mm, mm, mm. The hell's happening? Well, have we lo we've lost sight of ourselves, I think, in this country. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's happening here? Goes to West Virginia? Yeah. I mean, among schools that probably dislike each other most in the country, I feel like Marshall and West Virginia are up there. Oh, man. And App State, too? You're going to App State? You're going to. Come on. All right, the well, Texas got, State thing, it's like it's a different division of the Sun Belt. Not too not too big of a deal, but the App State yeah. and the WVU. Come on. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Hey, real quick, I did not realize this about uh Huntington. I I I knew they were in the eastern part of the or western part of the state. They are in the, the very furthest western part of the state. Uh it actually the town of Huntington looks like it touches Ohio and it almost touches uh Kentucky. It looks like a few miles. Is this the, is it, I hate to say this to you, West Virginia folks, you're not up in the mountains. Uh, is this really, is, is this school actually in true West Virginia? Ooh, shots fired uh, uh, after they go into bridge forth and beat you down the way they do. Of course, this JMU guy's got to come back with some slander. I'm just going to say this. Maybe this is a side of West Virginia that needs a little more representation. The lowlands. I looked up the uh, elevation, uh, like 564 feet. Not that high. Boom, uh, as a comparison, 3,333 feet. It's a much, it's, it's kind of like Marshall is down, mm. down on the, on the land. Mm, Remember that elevation land. when Marshall goes at App State this year. 
Hello. Could be a factor. Interesting. All right. Let me get to what they brought in. All right. Enough of this out, <laughs> fucking altitude of hunting. Geography, West buddy. Yeah. Geography. All right. Um, Geology, what have you. Look, uh, cornerback Miles Bell coming in from the Yukon Huskies. He said, look, couldn't beat him in the bowl game. You know what? Let me head over there to Huntington. <laughs> uh, tight end Cade Conley. Nobody talks shit to Cade Conley. He comes in from Central uh, Michigan to the Marshall Thundering Herd. Punter Colby Morgan from the Tennessee Vols. Uh, linebacker Steven Dix Jr. from Florida State. Patty, so he's got four years left of eligibility as Boom. well. Defensive end Landon Watson from TCU played in the national championship. You know, no big deal. Details, details. Uh, Arizona State defensive lineman J- uh, Jalil Rivera Harvey lands with the Thundering Herd. Also, TCU offensive tackle Altrick or Altrick Barlow coming in from the Horn Frogs. What a uh, what a big get there. Um, they also go out and get. Florida defensive lineman Chris Thomas, Florida State offensive tackle Lloyd Willis, uh, Wake Forest cornerback JJ Roberts, Appalachian State linebacker Keyshawn Brown or Keyshawn Brown, I think it is. So that's what they brought in. NC Nick, did they win or did they lose the transfer portal? Slight upgrade. They took a big hit, especially that at that receiver spot, losing three guys. You know, and then also, I'm sorry, no, two guys, but then also. Um, yeah, well, no, was it three? Or, it was three guys. It was three guys. I, I, you know what? I was right the first time. I shouldn't doubt myself. <laughs> but I do like the people that brought in in the secondary D line, O lineman, the uh, Dix from Florida State at linebacker. I'm going to say slight upgrade. I would say slight upgrade too. I think there's some good additions here. Patty, see what do you think? Win or lose the portal? Yeah, I mean they're bringing in studs from all these Power Five programs. I think that's if you're even if it's just adding depth. With, Guys of that quality, a group of five generally improves by bringing in that level of talent. Now, the offensive side of the ball, um, Clint Trickett, the offensive coordinator, he is definitely one Daytona and uh, scoring offense, 89th rush offense, 17th. Huff, Huff ain't fucking around. All right, we're going to run right at you. You ain't going to do nothing about it. On Notre Dame. Uh, 17th in the nation in rush offense, 109th in pass offense. So the forward pass, a little bit of an issue. Uh, total offense, 57th. Now they do return. Uh, the offense, I get it. Henry Columbi, who started what six, seven games a season ago, Texas Tech transfer. They bring back seven offensive starters if you are going to count. And I wonder where would you guys would you guys count? Like, because uh, does this count? If is he a returning starter? Um, and answer. Yeah. At the, at the quarterback spot, essentially, or is that, or is that something like, well, he played limited no, I mean, time. He, uh, he started four or five games at least. So yeah, I think that qualifies as a starter. If, if you ask me, yeah. I think he got multiple games as a starter. I mean, he, he, he threw what almost double the amount of passes Columbi did last year. Uh, so yeah, I want to, I'm going to mark cam yeah. Fancher as a starter. He, he had his ups and downs last season, but it's year three in Huntington, so uh, I think you're looking for him to make that jump. I think I think Marshall needs him to make a big jump from from year two to three. And you you know who they have at uh, at freshman backup quarterback, right? Cole Pennington. I know oh. Cole. <laughs> All right, he always throws to the outside. Quote quote uh, <laughs> days of thunder. Look, Cole's Cole favorite quarterback ever might be C.J. Pennington, right? Chad Pennington. What are you talking Chad, about? Chad Pennington. Who's CJ? Jeez. Chad, Pe- Chad, Pen- <laughs> Chad, Chad <laughs> really? Pennington. Chad Pennington. He was one of your favorite quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. Big Chad time. Pennington guy. Big Chad I mean, Pennington you're, guy. You're a Jets fan, so that helped. But I think yeah. you're a fan of Chad Pennington anyway. Huge Chad Pennington guy. I remember that. Look, you, people thought he was a lawn chair until he had that great fourth and goal run against the Bills where he fakes out that linebacker. Uh, he, was, right. uh, he was always renowned for the pop gun arm. That was after the injury, though. Yeah, right? after the yeah. injury. And and this guy's a fucking winner. Now, now Fancher started uh, seven out of the 13 games. I think if you start more than half the season, you are the returning for starter. Sure. Okay. For sure. Especially that the works. last half that of works. the season. Now, running back wise, Kalen. Uh, but Layborn goes pro. He what? What? <laughs> Didn't need to. Uh, th- but they still have Rasheen Ali, who missed some time a season ago. But man, 
Uh, so I guess we don't have to. Uh, Ali had a just gi- gigantic season a couple of years ago. What do you mean he didn't need to? <laughs> he had the opportunity <laughs> to. What are you and he about? went pro. He didn't uh, make it though, did he? Uh, well, he, he's he on the 49ers, the 49ers, but he wasn't yeah. drafted. Yeah, they got bad advice. All right. Uh, <laughs> He was a baller though. And I, he was, I remember one of our preseason pods, it was early in the preseason. So it was probably like April ish. We thought he might've been coming back. It was before the NFL draft, but no, he, he's, he definitely is gone. Uh, but they don't, they don't miss a beat with Rasheen Ali. Cause two years yeah. ago he was a baller and he was hurt. Most of last year came back. He led the nation the two year. years ago. Yeah. yeah led the nation. And he was able to, uh, I believe he was able to redshirt a season ago. So he's still just a sophomore. Still wow. cranked out wow. 273 yards in three games last year. 5.8 yards. A carry. Came back. Didn't miss a beat and saved a red shirt. And they got nicely Ethan, done. Ethan Payne and, and Maurice Jones there. Trust the running back spot. Charles Hoff knows what he's doing. Uh, wide receiver wise, they're bringing back two of three. They got Charles Montgomery and Demarcus Harris back. Harris, former Kentucky. Wow, cat. Uh, they're bringing in Brian Robinson, a sophomore who was a Florida State transfer. A lot of Florida State transfers on this team. Uh, bringing in a brand new tight end and Toby Payne as well. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Offensive line, you do return your center, Logan Osborne. Also, Dalton Tucker at the right guard spot and left tackle. Um, Ethan Driscoll. Man, a lot of NASCAR names. You got Driscoll. <laughs> I feel like that's a NASCAR Tricky. name. Yeah. Uh, so, three of five back on the O line. Will their numbers be better offensively in the new year, NC Nick? Well, I think the offensive line could be one of the top three in the Sun Belt. Uh, the quarterback, year two, getting most of the snaps. I think he makes a jump up. The real big question mark is the receivers. They were gutted at receiver in the portal. You know, can Demarcus Harris from Kentucky step in and play well? Can he take over kind of that lead role? They have a couple other guys who caught you know a decent amount of balls a year ago, but the main question mark is receiver. You know, but with this offense, they are run heavy. And I don't see any reason why that the O line is not better and the quarterback play isn't better. So I'm going to say there might be a slight uptick on the offensive side of the ball. Patty, see better. Now, they don't have Notre Dame on the schedule. They have NC State, which uh, you know, much more winnable. Um, but uh, but uh, look, they they do play a giant in the non-con as well. Besides them, well, they play a giant in the conference uh, slate in uh, JMU. Colby Look, made a uh, joke about ECU there, but uh, wow, oh, there they play go. ECU, JMU, and NC State. All right, there we go. They, They're our most the, hated team. Uh, the Sun Belt's the best. Regional football, baby. Small that's town watch, football. Yeah, yeah, that's why we we love college football. Well, Don't fuck this up, TV execs. Let's talk about uh, F- Fancher's like uh, addition to the pro. Like they were what three and three to start the season uh, with uh, the uh, Columbia at the helm. A uh, Fancher comes in for the JMU game and they go what? One, two, three, four, five, six, and one. Yeah. Throughout the rest of the season. Uh pretty decent scoring output most of the game, at least in the twenties. So JMU had a backup quarterback. Marshall had a backup quarterback. So your little Marshall, excuse, your little excuse about Marshall JMU? had their starting quarterback <laughs> for the remainder of the year. And they're better quarterback statistically. So they just happened to and JMU maybe didn't prepare for that. Mm. Maybe they didn't expect mm. uh Old Cam Fancher to look like Peyton Manning out there. Well, Fancher um, had some interesting, you know, games here as far as stats. Like he had two games where Marshall won, but he threw for under 100 yards. <laughs> the bowl game against UConn and the game against ODU. It seems to me like they knew they could run the ball on those teams, and they, and they just ran it down their throat. Well, yeah. and Fancher can run the ball himself. He can. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Yes. He, yeah. he ran for 136 yards against ODU. But then Fancher also had a game against like Coastal where he threw, the, you know, so it's funny. He threw for 320 yards against Coastal, but they lose. <laughs> so yeah. on the damn ball, yeah. Marshall. I like, the this. I like this. And look, don't forget, they got one of their uh, deep on that backfield. They got Smoke Jones, true scat back on that. Uh, uh, so smoke shout out to Jones. You got Cavassier Smoke. You got you Smoke go. Jones. Anytime right? a guy is n- nicknamed Smoke. Yeah. It's not football related. Right. Just keep that in mind. Uh, you know no where dog. they did lose the tra- <laughs> that's right. You know where they did lose the transfer portal guys. I'm sure that? we're gonna get to this in the coordinator ranks, right? Uh, uh, hold on. Let, let let me rattle off. Let me rattle off the defense. Let's side talk about of the, the ball. defense. Yeah, because uh, Jason Seymour. All right, uh, the new DC. But last year's defense. And once again, he's a new DC. But last year's defense. Whoo. 
sixth in scoring defense in the nation out of 131 teams, fourth in rush defense, 27th in pass defense, seventh in total defense. Wow. I mean, that uh, guys, can we talk about how good this defense was a year ago? Can we talk about how good this defense was a year ago? Numero Uno been, in what, the Sun Belt. When Bud Foster went and talked over there, I think they listened. All right. When when he went to Brent Pry and Virginia Tech, they didn't listen. Uh all right, they gotta listen. All right, but uh, <laughs> only four returning starters, though. Only four returning starters. Uh now I, I'll tell you this having two on the defensive line. Probably where I'd want my returning starters to be. Owen Porter is back. Same with Isaiah Gibson, a former Kentucky Wildcat as well. Well, uh, and then and then you bring in transfers from Florida TCU and Arizona State. I think they're just fine at D line. Also, Michael Green is a Virginia transfer, but he's probably he, you know Virginia hasn't fielded a great defense in a long probably time. Third um, string. Uh, linebacking core, you bring back Eli Neal, just one of three. But once again, you bring in Keyshawn Brown from App State. He's a day one starter. And Dix from Florida State. Yeah. So you got guys in the secondary. You got cornerback Michael, uh, Micah Abraham is back. Um, as well as, uh, well, no, uh, that's like the lone guy back. You're bringing a Texan, uh, a Texas Longhorn transfer at the other cornerback spot in Ishmael Ibrium. Um, Okay, and you got the wake transfer, JJ Roberts coming in at safety. I'm buying in to this defense. NC Nick, there's no way it's going to be as good from a number standpoint as a year ago, though. I don't think so. A lot of new faces, and you definitely like the portal acquisitions. I think they take a step back, but but maybe not a major step back. Maybe they, you know, slide into the 20s or 30s. Maybe instead of the top Sun Belt defense, maybe they're, you know, top five or something. So if the offense improves a little bit, defense takes a little bit of a step back, you know, maybe that's a wash. You know, you've said that twice now. They were not the top defense in the Sun Belt. J- JMU, I believe, was the top. <laughs> it, depends on, it depends on what you're... Not against Marshall. Oh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> it depends on, on how you're qualifying that, too. Is it scoring? Is it yardage? Is it efficiency? So, I mean, a lot of people can take that title, I suppose. Sure. Bottom line, yeah. they were a good damn defense, all right? You know, Owen Porter, nine and a half sacks coming back at the defensive end position. That's huge. And this this is a, a name of the year uh candidate here. Who's that? Uh Ty Quasi Legs. <laughs> that is that is a great name. Qua- that is Quasi, a great name. Quasi Legs. No, I think it's Ty Quaz, but it's I, I'm gonna call him Quasi Legs. Ty Quasi Legs. Ty All right, let's legs. go. Good for three and a half sacks himself. Uh so look. They got some players on this defense. They do. They certainly do. And look, um, but now let's talk about that coaching thing. All right. Are we going to no, get to talk, talk about that coaching thing? You mentioned it. Lance Gidry God, off to Miami, Whew. you know, uh, on the offense side of the ball, I guess. So you know, life gets easier for him in the ACC. Right? That's right. That's right. I mean, we saw uh, Miami against group of five competition uh, last year against middle Tennessee. So yeah. uh, he's going to fi- get it figured out. Tim Cramsey, I guess, was officially the offensive coordinator for uh, uh, Marshall last year as well. Went to Memphis, is now their offensive coordinator. So uh, Clint Trickett, though, got to pay these coaches. Got to pay these coaches. Clint Trickett was the uh, you know passing game coordinator, and so he takes over. You got continuity there. Yeah, Yeah, you got continuity there. If the head coach is only making seven hundred k, I don't know what the assistants are making. (laughs) You know, (laughs) we're gonna offer you forty thousand dollars to come here and call plays for the Thundering Herd. All right, American, not pesos. But look, and look, they made a movie on us before. So yeah, you know, play your cards right. We'll pay you minimum wage. Cards right. Uh, look, um, folks. Before we get into the the schedule and go game by game on the Thundering Herd schedule, I want to tell you we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, Best Ball Mania is here, and Underdog Fantasy give away fifteen million dollars in prizes. Uh, Underdog Pick'em is a great way to get down on your favorite MLB and NFL season player props. There's so so many ways to win over at Underdog Fantasy. Uh, and it's available in so many different states. So head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Once again, that's underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. All right. Uh, here we are on the schedule, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience, they're calling for just seven wins. Is that is, I mean, first reaction, NC Nick, as, you're, as a Sunbelt specialist? Are you just like, what? What? 
My first reaction is the overs looking pretty good. They won eight a year ago, nine if you include the bowl win. I don't see this program taking a step back. If anything, I see them, you know, at least holding serve or taking a step forward. So initial reaction is the over sounds pretty nice. And what last year they got Louisiana and Troy from the West. This year they get okay, you get South Alabama who's tough, but you get Arkansas State low and Arkansas State in November twenty fifth. High chance they won't have a head coach. We're gonna get to it. Patty C. It, it should be. It should also be noted they lost the two games to the Sun Belt West, Troy and Louisiana. I think this year, obviously, it's at least one and one. So right there, yeah. you have a, an additional conference win. There you go, Patty C. Uh, first reaction to seven wins. You know, uh, since I've already glanced at the schedule, I think that you know that there are some tough road games on here. But my first reaction upon hearing seven, yeah, over. Let's get into it because week one, it's not week one for their opponent. It's week two for their opponent. And Reese Poffenberger, big Poff, shout out, big Poff coming in too. <laughs> he <Huntington>. follows me. <laughs> <laughs> That's damn right he does. <laughs> Reese Poffenberger is a player too, man. If you watch the Great Danes, uh, Albany at Marshall, they do have the advantage of the week zero game against Fordham. Any chance the Great Danes could give them a game, Patty C? No. No, no, no. Okay. Marshall's going to handle business. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I got him one and oh. And then <laughs> <laughs> they head to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. All right. Get rowdy at the Dowdy. <laughs> Look, there's no way they're just going to walk on into to Greenville and get a dub. Uh, <laughs> last going to be a good game. Dude. Last time we it went is. to, last time we played, we went up to the, to the, to the Joan, the Joan of Arc. All right. <laughs> And uh, we got it. We got a fucking dub. They were celebrating up 16 in the fourth. We scored 17 in the fourth. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so ECU, ECU uh, wins that one. One, uh, one and one for the thunder and herd. Patty, see what are you doing here? That's a tough one. I, I think Marshall is the better team. I think ECU, <laughs> <laughs> I think ECU has uh, a, a, a large home field advantage. They're working in their favor. Who are you taking? You going to dance all night? I want to dance. Yeah. I want to dance because I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this game. So you got to put going, out or not, Patty? Yeah, oh, God, you know we pick winners. Here. You know. <laughs> all right, fine. Let's go Pirates. All right, NC Nick, who are you taking here? You know, I do like. Marshall's roster are a little bit better right now. And I think between this and the next one, I think they win at least one of them. You know what? You guys want ECU? I'm going Marshall. I'm the <laughs> Sun Belt guy. Give me the road team. Give me like the it. thundering herd. Your pick, you, you, you got your, if you got them going one and one, you got your wins confused because look, they get a bye week <laughs> and then they host Virginia Tech. Oh, Shout out to Virginia Tech for going to play this game because this game's awesome. Virginia and there is zero percent chance Virginia Tech wins this game. I'm <laughs> gonna go ahead and say this: there is a zero percent chance that the Hokies go into Huntington. Are we sure about dude, that? Dude, the teams never play here. <laughs> like Power Five schools. Yeah. Dude, Last year, Virginia good. Tech couldn't go into uh, to Old Dominion and get a W. <laughs> so you're either gonna go into Huntington. Unless he's got it. a pretty decent season, like they'll be pumped to get uh, Virginia saying, Tech dude. on the schedule. Oh, this place oh, will be yeah, lit. Be this lit. place will be lit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. Marshall starts three and zero. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's going to be ECU or Virginia Tech, uh, but I do think maybe they get one of those. No, they got the bye week before Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, Tech on the second end of a back to back, but uh, at Rutgers the week before, not exactly a Rutgers hard game. Rutgers is going to win that. Still, <laughs> Rutgers is going to be trip. favored. I bet you um, might be right. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're two and one, two and one, and then they host Old Dominion. <laughs> they're going the wrong way. Another yeah. shutout loading. Uh, four and zero, so, oh, baby. Four and zero. Oh in wow. September. Wow. I got them uh, three and one in the month of September, and now they head down to the most fickle, the most fickle <laughs> school of them all. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, look, uh, NC State. As much as I talk shit about them, I like what they do. They pack that stadium. They're not like UNC. UNC, you go to their you look or UVA or something. Those yeah. It's like fifty percent wine and cheese crowd. Yeah, they don't even know they're at a football game. <laughs> just there for the halftime show. Um, and uh, so I mean, NC State actually shows out. This will be a hard win. This will be a hard win. They're capable of winning this thing, but give me NC State to get this one. Nick, yeah, I think so. You know, look if you're NC State, do not sleep on this game, please. You know, uh, yeah. but at the end of the day, I think uh, it's a, it is a very tough 
tough road trip and Marshall doesn't go into at ECU and at NC State and win both of them. So I think they drop this one. And for me, at least they go four and one. Got him three and two. Patty, see what are you doing here in Raleigh? Uh, I think three and two as well. All right. And the back to back away, they head to the, the place where Terry Pendleton used to hit dingers. <laughs> All right. Park center stadium or some shit like that in Atlanta used to be Fulton County. It's on the site of Fulton County. It's yeah. not the actual nah, state. It's still Fulton County. <laughs> All right. Um, it's pretty cool. I saw the parking lot. It's got like where the pitcher mound was. They, they got it like drawn on the um, sidewalk, but it is right there. Pretty much on, on, on site. They're going to win this one at Georgia state because no one goes to their games. And I'm, I mean, this is a little bit of a dog fight, but uh, they get this one. I got them jumping back into the saddle and moving to uh Four and two on the season. NC Nick, what are you doing here in Hot Atlanta? Well, yeah, I mean, it will be a dog fight. It was a dog fight in Huntington last year where Marshall won 28 23. This is the second of back to backs. Even if it's not a rowdy environment, I mean, you know, sometimes those trips to like Boston College or, or Pitt are kind of awkward too. I'm actually going to have Marshall dropping this game. They're going to drop both of these road games. Because you always say it's tough to win on the road in conference, especially when it's a second of a back-to-back road trip. Four and two for me after this. Patty C. Well, I sure you don't. Uh, I sure hope you don't have him in a bounce-back spot next week. It better be three <laughs> straight losses. But uh, <laughs> son of a gun, no, I'm giving him a win here. They go down to Atlanta. Yeah, and get it done. And get it done. All right, then the, the game Patty C's alluding to Thursday nighter. Oh man, this place will be this place will be <laughs> rocking. They they host the James Madison Dukes, and uh, look, they went into Bridge Fourth and dominated. I, I got, got Marshall got dominating yet again in All right, prime so, time in Huntington. Yeah, the yep. thing I like about Marshall this year is I think they're going to have excellent line play, and actually that was one of Madison's strengths. Last year and this year, and it will be again. Yeah, but I Five think Marshall Marshall can handle that, and that's why they get back to their winning ways on Thursday night. Five and two, five and two. Patty, see who you taking here? You know, <laughs> I'm looking at this. Jamie, you led this game nine nothing, and you know, twelve to two at halftime, and then Marshall had a strong, or no, at the end of the first quarter, Marshall kind of dominated the second half of the game. Wore us down. We didn't have a quarterback to respond. I actually think I gave this game to Marshall because it's a Thursday nighter. Mm. But I'm going JMU on this podcast. <laughs> I went, I went JMU on the Marshall or Marshall on the JMU podcast. Pulling the old JMU. Benedict. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you learn from the best, right? That guy right next to you. <laughs> well played. So now you can say, I told you. I told you. So uh, uh, where we got him at? Where we got him at? You got him at five. Right and- now, uh, heading into their final five weeks of the season, I got them at five and two. As do I. Yeah, I think I got them with uh, three losses. You do have four and three, three losses. Four and three. Eight now they three. head to Conway, South Carolina, <laughs> take on the Chanticleers, and I got them winning this one on that teal turf in front of all of those people that started Hooters. You know what I mean? So uh, I got them moving to six and two with a win at Coastal. And oh, see, Nick, what are you doing tough here? road trip. I plan on being in attendance in this game on the coastal pod. I went Marshall. So I, I'm going to stick with Marshall. I mean, the game's 50 50. Uh, Marshall lost last year, surprisingly, in Huntington, but I think uh, revenge is on their mind and uh, they get this one done. Six, Six and, two. and two. Patty, see, what are you doing here? You know what's stunning? Is Coastal actually finished above Marshall in the uh, standings due to the obviously one one game lead and the head to head, but Coastal nine and four record had more points against than points for last year four hundred fourteen points against three hundred seventy eight points against. Meanwhile, Marshall only two hundred eight points against. They gave up less than half the points that Coastal gave up last year. Unbelievable revenge spot. Marshall gets it done. Boom. Okay. Back to back away. And they just think they're going to go over to kid Brewer stadium, take on Appalachian state and get the dub. This is a great rivalry. I love this matchup. App state wins this one. I got them moving now to six and three heading into the final three weeks of the season. NC Nick, how about you? Yeah. Speaking of revenge spots, now it's app state's turn to get revenge on Marshall. They're not coming into Boone and getting the W app state wins. Uh, I'm blocked up with Colby at six and three. I think right, I've set wins as well. Yeah. yeah. Six and Five three. And four. Now you're hosting Georgia Southern. 
Clay Helton. As they come into Huntington. I got Marshall winning this one, going to seven and three, right on that number. NC Nick, what are you doing here in Huntington? Coming back home after their second of back-to-back road trips, they get right at home. They knock off a feisty Georgia Southern team to get to seven. So I'm right at the number. Patty C beat them last year in Statesboro by 13 points. Going to beat them again in Huntington. There we go. Six and four. Six and four. Now they head down to Mobile, Alabama to take on South Alabama. There's a loss. There's a close game, though. I mean, like a 17 13 type of game here. But South Alabama gets it done as I have the Thundering Herd dropping their fourth game of the season. NC Nick, what are you doing here in Mobile? Yeah, again, I'm with you. We we mentioned, or I mentioned, Marshall lost both games to the Sun Belt West a year ago. South Alabama is one of the top teams in the entire conference, regardless of division. It's a tough road trip. I think they lost. They they uh, lose that one. Patty C. Yeah, I got to agree. Uh, last year, what was it against uh, Troy? They lost sixteen to seven on the road. Troy, meanwhile, beat uh, South Alabama in a close game, ten to six. I think South Alabama and Troy are probably comparable teams on the road. That's a tough game. I'm going to give the game to South Alabama. And then Butch Jones. Well, maybe Butch Jones. I think he might be canned by this one on November 25th. Right after you had that, all that turducken, uh, Arkansas state comes into Huntington. <laughs> I don't think so. This is the over Marshall eight and four. And if you followed my thing, they only have two losses in the Sun Belt. So where would that put them? NC Nick Sun Belt specialist. Well, I also have them beating Arkansas State, obviously. So I have them matching the record from a season ago. I'm going over. I'm going eight and four. But according to me, I have them three losses in the Sun Belt. I have them losing Ooh. to Georgia State, App State, and South Alabama. If that's the case, they probably do not represent the East. That's what they were last I year. I think App State's represent the East. Five and three, um, and that was good enough for uh, third place last year. However, two teams that finished above them, Coastal Carolina and, of course, James Madison University, the <laughs> Sun Belt East first place. You can't call them champions, but they were yeah. first place in the Sun Belt. So wait, you haven't gone seven You five can call them money? champions, too, by the way. Yeah, uh, they were champions. The I think the college team. experience can sign off on that, too, if you need it. That's right. Yeah, we no, can no, call no, national. No, nothing good. of him. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so what's you got him seven and five, Patty C? I got him a seven and five. You got to lean over or under. You can't just dance all night. You know what? You know? I'm leaning under. Woo! I'm leaning under. Really? I don't feel he, good about Somebody's it. bitter over last year. Ah, look, somebody's team got manhandled by Marshall. Yeah. During homecoming. During homecoming. Take everything he says with a grain of salt. (laughs) He's a bitter man. A bitter, bitter man. (laughs) Let let, let, let me pull up these team stats. Hopefully they're somewhat in our favor. They're not. Uh 326 total yards to 247. Yeah, you got the better of us against our uh what should have been our 10th string quarterback. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Folks, look, uh, you know, we, we are, uh, I'm on the over NC Nick's on the over Patty C's on the under, but before we get out of here, I had a chance to sit down with Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour to talk about his, his travels to Huntington, West Virginia and Jones C. Edwards stadium there in Huntington. So with no further ado, here is that interview joining us on the college football experience, Marshall thundering herd 2023 season preview episode is none other than college football campus tour. Wait, what? No, uh, AKA Michael Barker. And look, if, if you, maybe you don't know what college football campus tour is, what well, you should. All right. Get on, get on over there to Twitter. Yeah. It's the coolest Twitter account. I think out there, uh, you know, uh, Michael goes to, well, he's been to every FBS stadium, uh, most of the FCS stadiums, but he, he goes more than once and he documents it all on social media via that account uh, show. A lot of times we'll show the history of the football programs and the stadiums uh, when they were first built. Absolutely fantastic. Follow. If you love college football, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show and uh, talking a little Joan C. Edwards stadium. Yeah, no, thank you for that great introduction. And, you know, uh, Marshall moved to the Sun Belt, and Sun Belt is one of my favorite conferences. So um, really looking forward to talking about the Joan with you. Now, for me as a kid, Marshall is like 
a very cool program. I know we've touched about this. Like Hawaii holds a special place in my heart because of, of the availability on where we could sometime in the mid nineties, we had a network that was broadcasting Hawaii games for me on the East coast at like one in the morning or something. So we, 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 we fell in love with Hawaii, but for me, even before that, before D- direct TV ever existed, we're going to watch college football as a kid. And for, you know, you'd get regional TV, which if you lived over by the ACC, like me would be a terrible thing because Maryland was not any good. And you'd be stuck with like a Maryland, Georgia tech game or a Maryland, Virginia game where the teams just weren't very good. And uh, there's all these other great games going on. So you'd be bummed and you'd have to go walk yourself up to the TV because we didn't have the remote. We'd have to change the channel. And for some reason, cause I know DC is not that close to Huntington, West Virginia, but for some reason, like a channel up in the fifties that we were getting with the old bunny years would get Marshall games every week. And it was awesome. And they were really good. It was pre Randy Moss this is when they had Troy Brown and stuff, but it was awesome. And I've been a fan of Marshall ever since then. So uh, uh, th- this place definitely, uh, even though I've never been there, I want to get there. Tell me about the history of Jones C. Edwards stadium. Yeah, a lot of history and, you know, the same thing for, you know, a little bit later, you got Randy Moss, you got Chad Peddington. I think we all can remember that game where Byron Leftwich is being carried down the field by his offensive lineman. So a lot of great moments for, for, you know, underground college football fans, but uh, you know, Joan C. Edwards stadium, it opened in 1991, uh, original capacity, 28,000 is 38,000. Now it's the only division one stadium that's named exclusively after a woman. Uh, Joan and her husband, Jerry Edwards, have donated uh, over $65 million to the university. So that's enough to get your name on the the marquee. Uh, Back in the 90s when they were in FCS, they hosted the title game several times in Huntington. Uh, Marshall won two home FCS championships in front of their fans in 1992 and 1996. Uh, They've played in the MAC championship game there five times. And most recently, they played twice in the conference USA title game, all those conferences play their home or their championship games at home. And the record crowd for a game at West Virginia was not surprisingly versus in-state rival West Virginia in 2010, they got 41,382 fans into the zone. You gotta love that. I mean, look, and I, I, I didn't even make that connection that they were playing a home game in the championships, those years I was watching them here. I thought that was just home field. I think at the time when the reality was they just played the national championship in Huntington, West Virginia at Jones C. Edwards stadium. Um, uh, How many times have you been there? So I've been to three games at Marshall, uh, 2019, 2020 and 2022. The most, well, there was two last year, there was a lightning delay and they made everybody exit the stadium for about an hour and a half. And the only thing they did for you to, you know, re-enter is they do the black Sharpie line on your fist, and that was it. So if you happen to have a marker in your car and you were in the parking lot, <laughs> you could have made it in for the second half. Uh, but the most memorable game, I went to the – it was the 49th anniversary of the tragic plane crash uh, where all the – in 1970, they um, lost their lives, the entire uh, team. And so, you know, the next year was the 50th. I couldn't have made it, but the 49th. Uh, you know, the pregame atmosphere, it was somber, but they did a, just a wonderful job of promoting uh, the event. They flashed every member of the team's photo um, in succession on the video board uh, on campus. They laid, there's a fountain there and they let, laid a bunch of white roses there to represent all the lives that were lost. And, uh, you know, you can visit when you're there, you can visit the actual site where the plane, uh, the plane went down. So, to have an opportunity to, you know, be a part of something like that significant. Um, it was very powerful and it, it felt more important than football. Of course, you're there to enjoy football, but it's, it was a good connection to history, honoring the past. And then, you know, when, once kickoff happens, then it's all business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they've been, I wonder how they feel about seeing UCF kind of had a similar path to them as far as like the Mac then to the CUSA. Uh, and then they went, you know, they went to the AAC, but uh, Marshall went to the Sun Belt. But you wonder uh, what they would say, you know, about that and, and where they see themselves in the future. I love them in the Sun Belt personally. 
And this, this fan base is, is good. I, I want them to play West Virginia more often. I know that's not Marshall's call. I think that's West Virginia's call, but I would like to see that back on the schedule. And, and I went to ECU. So ECU and, and Marshall uh, have a long historic rivalry that I'm glad is back on the schedule. So uh, Michael, I appreciate you telling me your experiences. Maybe one day I'll catch you at Jones C. Edwards stadium there in Huntington, October 19th. James Madison at Marshall on a Thursday. I will be there. If you uh, get a bug up, you know, uh, know what, come and join me. There you go, folks. And folks, if you're listening to this and you're going to that game, well hit up college football campus tour, AKA Michael Barker. And uh, you know, he's down to meet, hang out, all that good stuff, you know, good. Check it out. You got to check out the Twitter page though. That is a must follow. He's doing an awesome competition right now. That uh, is just, a, it's, a, it's a must follow folks. You'll dig it. Hop on over there at CFB campus tour on Twitter. Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show, brother, and take care. Thank you for having me Colby as always. And you take care as well. Joy, you got, you got, uh, you know, he's going to the game that JMU will lose yet again, folks, Man, Michael a fun Barker. game to go to. That would be that Thursday would be night. You know, uh, moon shines everywhere in fucking West Virginia. So you go <laughs> Patty C in there, you warms you up. What's that? If Patty C wears his jam, you had, he might not get out of there alive. <laughs> it's true. Dude, I tell you about when I went to the uh, West Virginia game and I we're down like 40 points and this is back in like 2005. And I jokingly yelled jam you what? And it literally like raining water, uh, beer bottles down on me in the parking lot. It was fucking horrifying. <laughs> also saw a guy held up a gunpoint. Uh, and I also got held hit with a, uh, jungle juice filled tampon in the face. <laughs> a lot of things happen in West Virginia. That was, you don't in, Morgan. Talk about- that was uh, in Morgantown. What does Sam white say? This is in Cleveland, right? <laughs> uh, look, uh, look, but we want to see West Virginia. Marshall back on the schedule. I'm on the over and see Nick's on the over. Patty C is on the under like the filthy whore. He is all right. And uh, folks subscribe to the college football experience. We're on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Give us a follow and see Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore underscore N I C K Patty C's on Twitter at Patty C eight, three, one. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D give us all a follow. But once again, we host the college football experience year round college football talk. We host the FCS college football experience. Go check that out. All right. Uh, we host the college basketball experience. Yes. Marshall. You still got D'Antoni coaching there. Yes. Let's go. Uh, so, uh, college baseball experience. We got you covered. We come together as one youtube.com slash the college experience. Also the big 12 experience. I know maybe, maybe some dub V fans are listening to this. Want to know how they're going to do in the big 12. Check out that podcast as well. We come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe, tell a friend, check out the sports gambling podcast as well. They're always doing great work. Getting ready for the NFL season to kick. And uh, yeah, get the SGPN app. It's free to download in the app store and Google play store. Uh, and come talk, come talk a little thunder and herd football with us or basketball, whatever you in the discord. All right. Even if you don't like football or basketball, you know, and somehow you listen to this whole thing, maybe, you, <laughs> maybe you uh, just want to listen to a, uh, you know, a couple handsome men talking football. All right. Well, or you need a sleep track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But oh, we're uh, soothing. Hop in the Discord. They cover everything in the Discord. I don't. It could be a, could be a game of lawn bowling going on in fucking, uh, you know, Turkey. All right. And uh, look, they got you covered. All right. Patty C says he's gonna bowl a turkey. All right. Look, folks. This is the college football experience, Marshall Thunder and Herd style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Run.